Dear students, we have been continuously discussing about the alignment design and we started with the horizontal curve. In between, before going to the minimum radius of the horizontal curve, we started discussing about the skidding and overturning. And in the previous interaction, we discussed it for a flat surface. That means, on a circular curve, there is no super elevation being provided. There is no raising of a one edge of a carriageway with respect to the another edge. And the vehicles are moving on that with the given speeds or the design speeds. And therefore, we have to see that what should be the value of r and what should be the value of v or vice versa in any of such cases or relationships so that the things remain safe. Now, in continuation of that, today we are going to look at the super elevated cases first. And again, we will discuss about the skidding and overturning conditions. And once we complete that, then we will be going to the case of the minimum radius of the horizontal circular curve and try to calculate those values. Starting with the super elevated section regarding skidding, towards the end we discussed about the various forces which are going to be there as also being shown again here. That there is centrifugal force which is acting outwards. So, you have a outer side on this side and this is inner side. You have the weight of the vehicle acting vertically downwards there is a frictional force along the surface of the pavement in the lateral direction. Now, when we have these forces, then these forces when you have to talk about the skidding and overtaking in the super elevated cases, then these needs to be resolved parallel and perpendicular to the surface. So, <clears throat> that is what we are going to look at here. Now, first of all, let us resolve these forces along the carriageway and what we get. Now, we are resolving these along the carriageway. So, P is acting in this direction. Now, this P is being resolved here. So, the angle which is inclination is there. So, this is also theta. This is also theta. So, therefore, this becomes P cos theta and the one of the component of that comes as a P sin theta which is just normal to the surface. Similarly, if we resolve W, then W is becomes W cos theta here and it is W sin theta on the other side. So, when you are looking at this and we are resolving in this particular framework parallel to the surface of the carriageway, then what we get is P cos theta is W sin theta which is acting in the other direction. Along with that, there is a frictional force which is also acting in the opposite direction to P and therefore, what we have is F into R A plus R B. Now, when you are talking about this R A and R B, that means we have A here and B here and R A is like this and R B is like this, then these R A and R B which has normal forces on this surface, what they become as that R A plus R B is nothing but it is an effect of the P and W normal to the surface and that is what is P sin theta plus W cos theta. So, uh, these are the values which get combined as a summed of values for R A plus R B. So, when we put these and this equation that is going back to 9, what we get is P cos theta is W sin theta plus F into P sin theta plus W cos theta. And now, what we are trying to do is we are just rearranging them with respect to P and W and we do this then this P sin theta or F will come on this side and W sin theta uh, remains on the other side. So, what we get is P into cos theta minus F sin theta is equals to W into sin theta plus f cos theta. So, just this is a rearrangement with respect to P and W. Now, let us look at that how we can further uh, make the changes in this particular equation. Now, what you have is P into this is equals to W into this. What I am doing is that P divided by W is being made here and that is where it becomes sin theta plus f cos theta divided by cos theta minus f sin theta. And this P by W is known as impact factor. And when we are talking about this P, P is already being defined as m v square divided by R c. And if we are converting it into a form of W, then it is W into v square divided by g R c. And from this particular equation, what we can get is P divided by W and this P divided by W becomes V square <coughs> divided by G into R C. So, when we put this V square divided by G into R C in this equation, 
then we get as equals to sin theta plus f cos theta divided by cos theta minus f sin theta. So, this is one equation which we are getting here. Now, we are working further with this particular equation and what we are doing is the on this right hand side we are dividing it by cos theta. So, when we divide it by cos theta, so sin theta divided by cos theta means 10 theta plus f cos theta by cos theta 1 cos theta by cos theta 1 minus f into 10 theta. So, now our equation has changed into v square divided by g r c is equals to f plus 10 theta divided by 1 minus f 10 theta. Now, let us go back and see that how this can be further made simpler or otherwise this is one equation which can always be utilized as such. So, f we are talking as 0.15 and this theta which we are talking here is quite small, it is very small value actually. So, when theta is quite small then theta becomes equals to 10 theta. So, that is a condition we are talking here. So, when we look at this and when we talk about the another case, so when that means when it becomes equals to theta or 10 theta then 10 theta means E is being defined as meter per meter. So, it is say 1 in n. So, that is what is a 10 theta. So, we are considering this theta equals to 10 theta as a value of E. So, this is a rate of super elevation we have considered now here. So, 10 theta is being replaced by that. Now, if we consider this value of f into 10 theta, 10 theta is already is quite small and f is also 0.15. So, when we take this f into 10 theta, then this becomes very, very small. It is almost negligible value and therefore, 1 minus m 10 theta can be conveniently considered as 1.0 and if you do that, then what equation we are going to get is v square divided by g into r c is e plus f and this is totally 1. So, it is like this. So, either we have this equation or this equation which can be utilized for our work. So, when we are talking about this equation and we are converting it into finding out the control speed against skidding when the surface is super elevated, then this is the equation we are going to get. This is nothing but under root of E plus F into G into R C in meter per second. This same equation can be transformed so as to find out the radius R and this can be V square divided by G into E plus F in meters and that is how the radius of the curve can be calculated. Let us look at an example here. So, we have a radius as 250 meters vehicles are moving on this curved section. The coefficient of lateral friction is 0.15, acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square, rate of super elevation is 4 percent that is a small e. So, we have to calculate the control speed so that the skidding does not take place and that is given by v is equals to under root of e plus f into g into r c. Now, if we input the values here what we get is 21.79 meter per second or 78.46 kilometers per hour. So, that becomes a limiting value. So, if the speeds are less than this, then there is not going to be a chance of a skidding and that is where if we say that if the speeds are being kept up to 75 kilometers per hour, the system is going to be safe enough. Now, comes the overturning case. We discussed about this overturning case in the flat condition and we said that if you overturning is going to happen then the reaction at wheel A is going to be nullified and everything will come to the wheel B and the reaction at wheel B is going to take the effect of all of the things. So, going for this overturning condition and uh, we are considering the point here which is the center between the two wheels and the distance between the two wheels is being already defined as a small b. So, b is the distance between two wheels. So, if you are considering that and we are taking all of these moments about uh, the center point between this then what you get is this r b is going in uh, this direction the effect of P is coming in this direction and R A is going in this. So, what we get is R B into B by 2 is equals to R A into B by 2 plus 
Now, the effect which we are considering here is a combined effect of P cos theta and W sin theta which are opposite in nature. So, we have a force the resultant force as P cos theta minus W sin theta into H. So, that is an equation which we have. Now, if the overturning takes place as I said the R is going to be equal to 0 and therefore, now what it becomes is that uh, when this R A is 0. So, you have R B into B by 2 is equals to this value into H, but where R B is going to take the whole of the load which is coming in this normal fashion to the surface of the carriageway and therefore, R B becomes what the combination of W cos theta and P sin theta and W is nothing but mg. So, it is mg cos theta plus P sin theta is R B, R A is 0. So, we made 0 here. So, what we get is mg cos theta plus P sin theta into B by 2 is equals to mv square by rc into cos theta minus mg sin theta into h. So, this is a bigger equation and the expanded equation which we get. And now, we are going to rearrange the things here again and when we rearrange the things what we are going to get here is that the control speed v is given as under root of the ratio of g into rc into b divided by 2 h plus 10 theta and 1 minus b divided by 2 h into 10 theta. So, what you can see here is that though g is a constant value, but 10 theta if for a smaller angle what we have said that this 10 theta is e. So, the v is going to be dependent on what? v is going to be dependent directly on r c, it is going to be dependent on e, it is going to be dependent on b and it is going to be dependent on an inverse of h and that is how the effects are going to be there. So, it indicates that the control speed to eliminate the chance of overturning is going to be affected by the inclination of the carriageway that is E, then uh, the distance between the wheels that is B and the height of the center of gravity of the surface that is h. So, all of these values are going to make a difference here along with the radius of the curve. Let us look at an example for this case. So, here we are constructing a road where the outer section is uh, being raised and uh, the rate is 7 percent. So, this is E. The radius of the curve is 300 meters. So, this is R. We have to calculate the limiting value of the speed of vehicle. So, that there is no possibility of overturning and for that we have been given G as 9.81 meter per second square b as 1.986 meter that is center to center distance between the wheels or which is also known as track and the height of CG above the pavement as 1.251 meters. Going by the equation <coughs> an extended equation which have the relationship b, h, 10 theta and r. If we go with this one and we input the values here what we get is 51.88 meter per second can be the speed. <coughs> And if we transform it into kilometers per hour, it comes out to be 186.77 kilometers per hour. That means, the vehicles shall move at a speed of less than 180 kilometers per hour. We always rounded off either lower and upper depending on what conditions we are talking for the safety. And this will omit the chance of overturning and that is how the things are going to be safer. Now, there is one or another case which can be talked. What it says is that if we are not considering the effect of the lateral friction say f is being considered as 0. Then in this case E is being defined as a equilibrium super elevation and when we say equilibrium super elevation what does that means? That means is that the pressure on both inner and outer tires is equal. That means if you are talking about that reaction R A and R B which is there on this particular case where this is A, this is B. So, you have R A here and you have R B here. So, when this becomes equal and you go back to the equation 13 where you had taken all of these uh, things together. So, what you get is finally, the P cos theta minus W sin theta into H is equals to 0 because this when you are talking about the super elevated condition then you had P and then the this p cos theta was there and this w was there and when you resolved it this was w sin theta. So, p cos theta minus w sin theta into h is what we talked about. So, this was the movement 
and because you are talking about the movement about the center of this, so R A into B by 2 and R B into B by 2 were there and because these are now equals they goes out. So, what we left is this equation as such. Now, when we talk about this equation then if you are looking at this H which is the height of the center of the gravity here from the surface of the pavement then this cannot be 0. So, H cannot be 0. Now, when H cannot be 0 what you are left is that P cos theta minus W sin theta is 0 and therefore, we can say is the P cos theta is equals to W sin theta or P divided by W is 10 theta. So, P divided by W is 10 theta where P divided by W is also being defined as V square divided by G into R C. So, if we consider this then what we get as an equation as V is equals to under root of G into R C into 10 theta. So, what you found here is that there is no effect of F being considered we have directly E and R C. So, for this we have an example here we have again a radius. So, this radius is 300 meters it is a state highway road traffic is moving on that the G is as 9.81 meter per second square. The rate of super elevation is being given as 7 percent. We have to calculate the limiting value of the vehicle speed on the section if the super elevation is a equilibrium super elevation. So, for this equilibrium super elevation the equation is under root of g into r c into 10 theta where 10 theta is e. So, if we put the values here what we get is 9.81 into 3 into 0.07. So, 14.35 meter per second or 51.67 kilometers per hour. That means, the vehicle should move at a speed less than this and we can see less than or equals to 50 kilometers per hour and if the load supported by both of the sets will be equal the, that is the equilibrium condition of the super elevation is going to be achieved. So, what you found is that when you are talking about flat conditions you are talking about super elevated conditions in combination when it is getting and overturning there are lot many things and the, the values of V are changing. and. Uh, uh, you can try to take one single example and then see that how it changes across all of the four conditions and how the value of V is going to be different. The, that I am going to leave it to you to just try at your location at your home and find out those changes. Now, let us come to the circular curve. So, we have now the base available to us that why we are talking about a super elevated or a raised surface. So, this raised surface is being provided the vehicle is moving on this particular curve circular curve and centrifugal force is acting outwards. So, this is P this is M V square divided by R C. So, that is already there and the skidding is going to be there. So, if you are talking about that then the lateral friction in the uh, coefficient of friction is F. So, that is also there and the weight of this is already working in the downward direction. So, let us look at all of these things together and see that how we can find out the minimum radius. Of course, we have looked at for this for the skidding case. So, when talking about the centrifugal force uh, P is equals to m v square by r, v is the design speed in meter per second, m is the mass of the vehicle and this can be correlated as w divided by g also. R is the radius of the curve in meters, W is the weight of vehicle, G is the acceleration due to gravity, the values may be given to you otherwise the standard values can be utilized. So, when you are looking at this so this P which is m v square divided by R when you put it in terms of W then it is d w v square divided by G R or impact factor P by W is v square divided by G R, but this impact factor P by W is equals to E plus F for a non-skidding case. So, if we go for that then what we get is E plus F is equals to V square divided by G R or the R minimum which we get is V square divided by G into E plus F where this V is in meter per second, but if we are converting it into kilometers per hour and we are considering the value of G also then what you get is V square divided by 127 into E plus F. So, this is an equation which is there which can be utilized so as to find out the minimum radius of the circular curve and this minimum radius of the circular curve is going to be related to the ruling design 
is speed and this ruling design speed is related to the category of a road and it is also related to the terrain condition. So, if you remember in the very starting when we were talking about the various factors which affect the geometric design, there we talked about the design speed and that design speed we talked for the urban roads as well as the rural highways. And then we also talked about the terrain conditions like plain terrain, rolling terrain, mountainous terrain and steep terrain. And within that in each of the cases then we had two values of the speeds, one was the ruling design speed and another one was the absolute minimum design speed. Okay. So, uh, we are considering here the ruling design speed so as to calculate the value of R minimum. So, this is uh, all of the things we have already discussed about. Let us go and uh, see how we can calculate the values. So, here we have a speed of 100 kilometers per hour. So, this is a capital V. Coefficient of lateral friction is 0.15, acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square, rate of super elevation E is 7 percent. We have to calculate the minimum radius of the curve, so that the skidding does not take place. So, the equation is R c is equals to V square divided by G into E plus F. So, V is being transformed into meter per second, if we are considering it is meter per second. If we are talking about one uh, in terms of kilometers per hour, then it is V square divided by 127 into E plus F is what we can consider here. But then in that case G is 9.81 being considered. Okay. So, here because it is 10, so we should try to work with this equation itself, which is a base equation. So, when we keep the values here, so what we are going to get is 350 meters. So, what it says is the radius of the curve shall be more than 350 meters, so as to avoid the chance of a skidding taking place when the vehicles are moving at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour. So, this is how we get certain values. Okay. But in the flat condition, we have observed that it is probably going to be either the radius has to be increased to something like 600 meters, so that the things remains more or less safer. So, that is what I said that you should try to see that how the values are changing from one condition to another for a given set of conditions. Now, here there is another example where what it says is calculate the minimum radius of the circular curve considering that the traffic is moving on that curve at a speed of 80 kilometers per hour, coefficient of friction in lateral direction is 0.15, rate of super elevation is 7 percent and it says that how much will be the radius if the rate of super elevation is reduced to 4 percent. So, considering uh, the formula because here we are not talking about g and let us consider g as 9.81. So, what we can have an equation as r minimum is v square divided by 127 into e plus f. So, when we consider this and we put the values of v as 80 kilometers per hour, e as 7 percent, f as 0.15, then we get a value of 229 meters. Whereas, if the value of e is being reduced from 7 percent to 4 percent, then in that case r becomes 265 meters. So, there is a increase in this particular direction. So, because E is changing, so E is reducing, so even E is reducing r minimum is going to increase. So, that is a thing we should keep it in mind. Now, here we have another example where uh, it is a two lane two way road and uh, there is a horizontal curve on this, we have to calculate the ruling minimum radius. So, ruling minimum radius means it is correlated with ruling design speed and we have the four cases being given here. The first is that there is a state highway which is in rolling terrain, there is a MDR which is in plain terrain, there is a national highway in mountainous terrain and there is a sub arterial road in urban area in the plain terrain. Now, when we have all of these cases, then uh, you have to refer back the table for the design speeds for all of these cases. The values of E and F they are going to be constant, F is constant as 0.15 and E let us assume to be constant at 7 percent. So, uh, let us try to find out the values. So, R minimum is going to be V square divided by 127 into E plus F. So, for the first case of a state highway in the rolling terrain, 
the ruling speed is going to be 80 kilometers per hour. So, in the plain terrain for the state highway it is 100 and in the ruling it becomes 80. And for a value of E7 percent and F.15, now what we get is as 230 meters is the minimum radius of the horizontal circular curve. Now, if we go for the second case that is MDR, now MDR is in the plane terrain. So, in the plane terrain for MDR, the speed is same as for the state highway in the rolling terrain. So, it is 80 kilometers per hour and therefore, again we get a value of 20, 230 meters. Now, if you are looking at national highway into mountainous terrain, then the rolling speed is going to be 50 kilometers per hour. And for the given set of conditions, now the value comes out to be 90 meters. So, this is another value. If you look at the sub arterial in the plain urban area, then for that plain urban area, the rolling speed is 60 kilometers per hour. So, for an arterial road for as well as for a sub arterial road in the plain terrain, it is 60 kilometers per hour. And if we consider E as 7 percent and F as 0.15 percent, then R minimum comes out to be 130 meters. Of course, when we will be talking about the various values of the super elevation rate that is E, then in the case of urban area, we try to keep it to 4 percent and in certain conditions where this 4 percent is not sufficient enough, then we go for 7 percent and this we are going to talk further. Okay, let us not keep more discussion on this at this moment. Here we are talking about the minimum radius given subjective to the given conditions E, F and V. Now, this is another example where we are again being given a two lane two way road and uh, we have to calculate absolute minimum radius. Absolute minimum radius means now it is correlated with the minimum speed. So, absolute minimum speed. So, these absolute minimum speeds like if you talk about national highway and state highway for a plain terrain, then the ruling is 100, then the absolute minimum is 80. So, likewise we have the values. And the conditions, the uh, four conditions which we discussed in the previous uh, example, they are being taken as same. So, let us try to find out the values here. So, equation remains the same that R minimum is V square divided by 127 into E plus F. For a state highway in the rolling terrain, in the case of uh, ruling radius, it was 80 kilometers per hour, but now uh, for absolute minimum, then the absolute minimum design speed is going to be there, which is 65 kilometers per hour. For E as 7 percent, F as 0.15, this comes out to be 150 meters, because the speed has reduced. Therefore, the radius is also going to be reduced. It was 230 meters in the previous example, if I remember correctly. Then the second case is an MDR and in the case of MDR, the absolute minimum speed as I said because uh, you are talking about plane versus rolling. So, uh, that is how uh, shifts are there. So, here also V remains as 65 kilometers per hour then therefore, the minimum ruling uh, min, uh, minimum absolute radius which is going to be there in this case is 150 meters. For national highways in the mountainous terrain, if you remember the ruling design speed, it was 50 kilometers per hour, but absolute minimum is 40 kilometers per hour. And if these values are being put in this equation, then what we are getting is a rounded value of C60 meters or calculated value of 57 meters. And sub arterial in the plane terrain, there is nothing like a ruling or an absolute minimum. So, the value remains the same. So, it is 60 kilometers per hour. So, for these values, we get 130 meters as a final value. So, this is how you can see is that as uh, we are reducing the speed because the effect of this speed is going into direct correlation. So, the radius is also reducing. Okay. And, but if say we have changed the value of E from 7 to 4, then the R minimum is going to increase, but F we are not changing because it is being considered as a constant value and that is 0.15 in our Indian conditions. So, with this we can uh, stop our discussion today here and we will be discussing about the various radiuses for the different categories of roads further and we will take up all of these particular things in the next uh, lecture. Till then, thank you and goodbye.